Yeah? Okay, good. That is not going to get my get rid of my own uh, English accent, so hopefully you will understand that. But I think we're going to start. We have, a, as I said, full hour packed. We're going to try to teach PHP new tricks, a new way to understand what we're going to say and how to handle it. And that's exactly what machine learning is going to do for us. So for the first hour, well, for this hour, it's not. Um, we're going to... Um, see how we can give new orders to PHP. Usually we work with uh, imperative programming. We're going to say, okay, PHP, do that, and then do that, and then do that. And hopefully in the third, in, the thir in this sequence of uh, orders, he's not going to uh, find a bug and he's going to do it. Now we're going to handle the problem slightly differently. We're going to say, okay, here is the situation. This is the thing that I want. These are the things that I don't want. Train, do something, learn. And then I'm going to show you the real world. And you're going to apply that to the real world. And since you're not probably going to believe me straightforward that that can work, we're going to apply that to a real problem, which is finding pieces of code in comments. We're going to see that a little later. But as you know, when we write code, usually we end up putting things into the comments, not only messages for the next developer or for ourselves in six months, but probably things that we just want to set aside for a moment, and then hours later, it's still there. We want to get rid that, of that and make sure it's, uh, it's cleaned. It's not such an easy, an easy task, and that's going to be real suited for uh, machine learning. So, complex learning. Um, for those of you who don't know me yet, I'm usually the one boasting that I have uh, the second elephant ever done. So, this is the, the blue one. It's been a very happily finding a new, uh, a new generation of uh, elephant here. Um, on the other hand, I also use uh, machine learning in my daily work, and this is why I end up with this uh, session, uh, by doing static analysis. So static analysis, just to be broading, uh, describing that broadly, um, I try to review code automatically without my own intervention on the code. And after just checking a number of things, well, there are situations where I have to guess it. And this is where I usually uh, start using machine learning to start any time beyond everything that is easily and systematic and go a little further and not just let people with too many false positives. Anyway, um, machine learning, what do we want to do with that? Well, there are two words, so uh, hopefully you can translate that into Polish a lot better than me. Uh, machine corresponds to, of course, the computer itself. Here it's not going to be the computer, it's going to be PHP itself. We're going to teach PHP to do something. And learning is, of course, the fact that we're going to not tell it how to do. It's PHP itself that's going to understand how to do it. We're just going to show him what to do, and then he will learn the how. So that's kind of different, uh, as I mentioned earlier, about this list of sequence and order we, we usually give to PHP because we're going to start with the, the initial uh, situation and then PHP will learn something and we will end up with a model or a little piece, piece of configuration file or things like that. And from there, we're going to apply that to uh, the real world and make sure that this is useful for us. Um, this is, uh, machine learning is applied, of course, those days uh, very broadly and in many situations. Usually you, you have that connected to big data and uh, large, large, uh, large result sets. Um, we're going to start to do that on very small sets. So do not start ad hoop as soon as you hear about machine learning. It's going to be available for also very little sets and that's going to be applicable for everyday's, everyday's life. So from there, what can we do with machine learning? There's a wide uh, variety of things. Uh, you probably heard a little earlier the, the Go system, the Go um, AlphaGo who tried to beat um, the world um, master of Go in, um, in a competition. It managed to make uh, four over five over one um, game. Um, you can play, well, actually in, in chess and tic-tac-toe nowadays, um, machine learning is actually so good that it beats anyone. So it's not even a competition against the machine. Go seems to be a, a little resistant, but that's all. And there are lots of other situations where uh, machine learning is being used. Fraud detection is one of, oops, too fast, is one of them um, in banks. Um, OCR, where you don't want to learn uh, how to recognize every way someone can do a letter. Well, that's also a situation when the machine can learn a lot and can learn from 
seeing a num large number of, of situations. Um, no, recently, you can have robots that are actually um, learning how to walk, and apparently it's not, a long, it's not an easy task because it takes us like at least a year to actually race from just lying on our back to just walk. Computers also need to learn, and it's a, it's a difficult task. This is all good, but who is going to make a robot walk with PHP? Yeah, none of you, right? So um, we have other things where PHP can, can have application of machine learning. One of my favorite is ETA, estimated time of achievement. You know, when, when people say, OK, I fired the script, and then, of course, the first question comes, how long does that going to take? Hmm, I don't know, it depends. Depends how many information we have in the database, how many tables have been filled, how many rows, how many names, how many distinct things. And that's the good answer of any engineer, right? But with machine learning, we can actually start from all those characteristics. We have, I have listed a number of them. We start with them. We link that to how long the process runs. Machine learning will then be able to process that and give us a more accurate thing than just dividing the number of tasks by the first times we have measured and understanding it's going to be two days while actually it's not. Okay? So ETA, um, of course, e-commerce works a lot. Uh, lots of people like uh, to use the machine learning for, for in e-commerce, trying to generate uh, suggestions. Oh, you bought that and that, and then we're going to uh, suggest you the other one. And what else? Um, and the last one is the one we're going to apply and do now, is uh, checking, finding, um, finding code in, in PHP comments. I mean, so this is a classic problem, and that's going very, to be very suitable for machine learning. For one good reason, it's kind of complex problem. What would be a characteristic of any piece of PHP code into a comment? Well, it could compile, right? We could actually take the comment itself, try to compile it, and then realize that maybe the comment is just partial. Um, or we can, have, we can detect a number of characters, but it's not sufficient because this, not, this is not compiling code. So, if we try that right now, it's going to be a long list of conditions. Yeah, it has to be ending up with a, with a semicolon. Oh, no, it's not going to end up with a semicolon because it's an if, so it, there's a block and there's no ending with a semicolon. Things like that. So, it's kind of complex, and in the same time, what we have here, and I'm sure that that, that applies to you, is we have a lot of comment experts. Okay, who's an expert in commenting here? Okay, so I see 5% of the, of, the, um, of the room raising their hand. That's probably 95% of liars, right? Okay, we all, we all use comments. We are all able to read them and understand if it's plain polish or a partial piece of code or a full piece of code, right? So I'm going to use that later, so please keep awake. Um, no good, no simple solution, and we have lots of data, so we're going to apply that to one situation, which is checking the whole code base of phpMyAdmin and see how many code pieces of uh, comments actually bears code. Basically, there are 14,000 different comments in phpMyAdmin, and that's not counting any PHP doc comments. How many of us in the room there? Like 100? How long do you think we're going to, to take all of our computers and brain together to read all those comments and make sure that we have checked everything? More than one hour, right? Excluding the fact it's going to take ages to download it. Yeah? Okay. So that's a long, that's a long situation. That's something we could do, but that's going to require way too long time, and we would like the machine to, to do it. So let's start the process from the beginning. The whole synopsis of what we're going to do is here. And it's, it's quite a simple synopsis, actually, but uh, it explains everything. We have actually two branches. The first one, as I mentioned, is the learning process, which we're going to do, for, do first. And then the second one is doing the actual result. Oh, most of the time, you have a huge list of data, and maybe you don't know exactly what's history data and what's uh, more, uh, real data. Now, most of the time, what happens is you start with a, a big amount of uh, history data, and history data means that you have both the initial situation, so a comment we can find in the code, simple enough, and you also have the result. Initially, we don't have anything, right? To start this session, we don't know exactly one of things, one of those comments, so we're going to do that a little earlier, later, but we have at least some data. And we're going to do the training, 
Real data is about the same. It will also lie in some other's code. I don't know, we can put that in Symfony's code and apply that there. But we won't have the result. We'll have the machine test it and give us the result. So that's the difference between history data and real data. Sometimes they are together, and sometimes we're just using a slice of history data to do the test and then apply it. So starting with that, we said first, first part, we only cover the three first steps. We do the history training, and then we get a model. To do that, we need an engine, and the engine is the fan extension. Okay, it's very simple. I never, I never remember that name. Fast Artificial Neural Network. It's a library that's actually very old. It probably dates back from past millennium. Can you imagine that? No, middle age, little after that, fan. Um, and it has been actually linked to PHP since PHP 4 at least. So it's, it's been there, it's been around for ages. And given the fact that the fan itself is not evolving, it means it's very stable and has very little bugs. So that's an easy one. You can download it. It's, been, um, it's always been a side project from Jakub Zelenka, which I will thank again now, because I've always been a fan of this library, and it's always used to, useful to me. I contacted it last December about the PHP 7 support, and like within a month, I had a new library for me. So thank you. Who's, use, who's been using neural networks up to now? Are you familiar? One, two, so, oh, five. Five. Good. So you mean that the rest of the room is not using their own brain, right? <laughs> okay. That, that's kind of scary. Um, so what's neural network? Well, neural network is based on an analogy, on the bio biology and an analogy. Neurons are the thingy you have in your brain that's actually um, making you think, making you move, making you feel pain, and all of those crazy things you can do. Okay? And you can see one of, one of them here, well, it's kind of a romantic view, I guess. Um, and it has several, uh, several parts. There is the first part above, this big hairy stuff. Uh, it's called the dendrites. So the dendrites is the thing that actually collects the information. So collecting the information may be um, sensory filters, so the eyes, the, the touch, the smell, anything you can feel, that comes from there. Okay? All those dendrites get a first signal, and they are usually activated by, com by coming from something else. It may be also another neuron. Okay, the neurons can easily get linked. So they get that, the, those information, and then the, 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 the electricity goes to the center, and the center decides if it will release more electricity or not. Simple enough at that point. The, the electricity then goes to the axon. The axon is this long part. There's only one, and it ends up with a few dendrites, not too many of them. But this is basically the biology response to then. Okay? Anything that's done is a then, and then the electricity goes there. If nothing happens, then the axon is not so, uh, used. It will just stay this way. You can count basic, uh, up to 15,000 uh, 15, different dendrites in one neuron. So what you see here is a 15,000 15, 15, if-then condition. Now think about it. PHP my admin that we're going to process in a moment has 7,000, so half this number, 7,000 if-then condition in it. And that's including if-then, if-then else is, if-then else is, whiles, for each, and things like that. This has probably more even condition that I ever written in my whole career. Think about it, that's probably true. On the other hand, for the youngest one of you at least, you have probably a hundred trillion, no, a hundred billion, a hundred billion of those neurons. So whatever we're going to do with our little Peter Speed script of five or seven lines of code is not going to compete anything near, near that power. Okay? But of course we don't need things like that. As I mentioned, different neurons have different usage, and for us, neurons are just going to be, you know, disks. Three kinds of disks. The input one, here they are in red. The input one are the data we're going to provide. We give it a few values, numbers, and we put that there. That's the, in the input data, the input neurons. They will understand what we give, give them. In between, that will be the brain itself, 
and it's a number of hidden neurons. We don't know exactly how fun is going to handle that. We just say, OK, we want here nine neurons in between in two layers. We can change a little bit that. Okay, we want 10 layers of 10 neurons each, things like that, but not too much. In the end, we have the output neuron, which will handle the results and will collect everything we want. Okay? So basically, for our common system, we start by providing and feeding this part, we wait a little bit, and then we get the result. That's, that's a very short brain, but that's a brain. Everyone is, is, is up to there? Easy enough? Now you're starting your own neural network working, right? Okay, so let's see how your own neural network is working in PHP code. Ooh, fun is a nice extension. It also has the longest function names ever. <laughs> Believe me, you're happy that it's only a five-line script I'm going to give you. Anyway, um, it's a very standard PHP 3 piece of code. You create something, which is a resource. As you know, in resource, we don't know what's in it, but we can use it, it's kind of a hidden object. From there, we're going to give some parameters, and the rest will come later, because we need to prepare other things. Okay? What do we need to, to offer? What do we need to configure initially? Number of layers. For the current purpose, we're going to, just going to use one. We'll use more later. We're going to use five input neurons, three hidden ones, and one output, because we just want a binary result. Is it PHP code in this comment? Or you not? Yes, no. Very simple. I'm not going to dwell too much on the activation function, but if you remember the neuron, the center, the, the core, is supposed to accept the data from 15,000 different uh, dendrites and suddenly release some uh, results. That's the activation function. The default one, which is the symmetric, is fine enough. So give it a try, but start with that, and then when you're clever, you can change that to something a lot more complex. So at that point, we have our engine. The only thing we need is food. We need to fuel the engine, and we're going to filter to, get, to give it some data. Now, as we mentioned, we're going to test that on phpMyAdmin. So phpMyAdmin is actually here, and it's nowhere close to anything that fan can understand. It's actually structured data, but it's still a big bunch of files, of text files. So we need to do a lot of things to prepare that. We start from the raw data, and the first part I call that extract. It means that we're going to look at the code, I mean, at least look at the structured data, here the PHP code, and extract anything we want, and we're going to process and have one line for each. Now, do you know how to process PHP code and extract comments? Sorry? Opcode. <laughs> Uh, token, that's the good one. So, who's been using the tokenizer? Yeah, him, apparently. Your friend knows that so far against you. So, the tokenizer, actually, I'm going to ask another question. Who's been using PHP? <laughs> so, you've been using the tokenizer. Well, you don't know it yet, but you're going to know that after the session. The tokenizer actually is a part of the PHP engine that reads files, turn them into words. Tokens is the Take word, 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 word for words, okay? It's going to read everything. He said, okay, the first characters, it's a bunch of things, so I put that as a raw data, raw HTML uh, token. The next one, I see the opening tag, so I give it a token of opening tag, and then I go on. And this is a white space line. I'm going to put this part in a new token, and then I go on. Oh, this is a keyword. I'm going to put that in a new token, and again and again. It's extremely fast. It has two functions in PHP that you can use in userland, which is especially token get all. You give it a, a big string with your code, and it will just spit all the tokens. Simple enough. But inside, we take a look at the tokens. There are T variable, T increment, T function, T class. And there are three tokens that cover, um, that cover comments. There is T comment, and there is another one for multiple line, and there is another one for PHP doc. You confirm? Yeah. yeah, great. Ah, last time someone disagreed, so that was difficult. Um, so that's the first part. Anything we can do to extract the data, we use it, okay? Um, if you have suggested regex, 
Mm, it's probably not the best idea because we have semantic way to reach that, but it still works, so why not? At that point, we have the, 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 the element, but basically one line, one, uh, one comment. The only thing is we need to refine those data and make them as pure as possible, okay, as clean as possible. That's what I call the second level, which is from this list of data, we try to make them better, and we're going to remove one of them. So I mentioned three kind of comments. Which of the comments are you going to, read, to get rid of? PHP docs. Yeah, PHP docs. Apparently, we're going to find things there, maybe code, but obviously that's not going to be the usual comment. We, no one is going to shove aside a full function by putting it into, into a PHP doc. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's really unusual. So the first second, anything you can, you can apply on your extracted raw data and make this amount of data a little smaller but a little better is good. Okay? At that point, just keep it as obvious, uh, no, not obvious, objective as possible. Meaning that obviously we, we will agree easily that PHP doc should be set aside for, for a small experiment. So this is an obvious one. Now that we have actual data, as we mentioned, the one who have the truth is who? The expert, right? The commenting expert that we have. The commenting expert. Anyone who can read the code, I mean, actually at that point it's just a piece of text. Anyone that can read the piece of text and say that's a comment, that's code, that's not code, that's code, that's not code. Okay? Are you ready for that? Yes? Be careful, I'm going to ask a question. Anyone who answers wrong is out. <laughs> Let me give it a try. And that's not working. No, that's the other better. Here is a list of things. Not all of them, of course. I'm not going to feed you with everything I know in terms of comments. The, the one at the top, the one at the top, at least the four first one, do you agree that it's, only, it's not PHP code? That is not going to run as PHP code, right? Look, this is completely gibberish, right? Who can understand that? <laughs> hmm? I don't know. I don't know. I don't speak Polish, so I'm sure it's not that. <laughs> um, the one at the bottom, the three there, on the contrary, I kind of clearly code, right? Even partial one, we can easily say this one is not complete. It's not going to compile if we just use it this way, right? So this part is kind of okay. Now, of course, and this is where you are going to be the experts. What do you think of the three in the middle? So um, one, two, three. No, I'll say three there. Maybe I can include this one. What do you think? Um, let's take one, one that's not in Polish. For example, this one. Who, can, who thinks that's PHP code? Who thinks? I just need a vote, right? Yes or no? Completely computer guys style, okay? Yes or no? Is that PHP code? Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that everyone is, is not asleep. Who's, who thinks it's not PHP code? Okay, there's a number of people who are sleeping. At that point, this is the situation when you understand you need experts. It's not an obvious one. We, have, we said it's a complex problem. At some point, we could spend the rest of the hour arguing if this is PHP code or not. Right? I mean, it's already the case. I mean, a third of people do not want to answer that. And then the rest, two-thirds, and that's actually very weird because usually it's uh, at least tilted one way or the other, but it's like half and half. So I would have half a group fighting on one side, half a group the other one, and the third half probably with me waiting. <laughs> so this is not, and, and here, maybe that depends on your own situation, okay? This was extracted from my own code, I know it's not. It's a comment, okay? But maybe people can use two different operators, or they don't know, and they will decide that it's yes or no. Even for something that simple, we need the expert, and if you disagree and decide that it's yes, then the machine is going to learn something else. That's all. Whenever you have to gather a bunch of experts on whatever subject you're supposed to, just make sure they reach a decision. Decision itself is not so important. It's important to just reach something, whatever it is. Here it's a yes and no situation, maybe a lot more difficult than other situations. 
So there, there are easy ones, one yes, no, and in between there's a bunch of them that needs more thinking. Anyway, from there, once we have a, re a review of them, oh, no, 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 that's too early. He, that's killing. Whatever. Um, we have the, those comments. We stay with those. That's going to be a good example. We mentioned that we want five, five input. Did I say? No. Good. F we want five neurons as input. Five neurons as input. What do we want to put there? What can you tell me in terms of characteristics, things that you can see from comments that would help you decide if a comment is PHP code or not? Let me say something. For example, um, mentioning or finding the usage of the dollar sign should be an example of things that help me decide if it's a comment or not, if it's a code or not. Okay? So I'm going to come to, come to that, right? So that, that helps. It's not, it's not a silver bullet, and that's why we're here, but it helps, right? I cannot say that when I'm in Canada. Because sometimes people raise their hand and say, yeah, but what about prices, right? Here in, in Eurozone, so of course everyone's using Zloty, or Euro, or Pound, so this is not a dollar sign. But in terms of code, that helps. What else can you see as a characteristic of things or we can use? Brackets? Brackets? Oops, sorry. So brackets, that's a good one. Brackets, that's another one. Other ideas, semicolons, okay. So semicolon, that's another one, especially since we do not use them so often, okay? Dot for, comp for concatenation, for example, would be less than a good idea because there are too many of them in whatever language we're using, okay? It's the end of the sentence. It could be useful, actually, if we were in China because they don't use the dots. They use another one, a rounded one. So you see, the culture is important at that point. Other ideas, beside, Characteristic, uh, special characters. Keywords, like. I don't, I don't know who answered that, but the keywords, which, which one? Give me, a, give me a few ideas. If, okay. What else? <laughs> Sorry? Else, yes. We're we waiting for them, and then that will be good. All known PHP, oh, that's a lot, that's 4,000 lists, right? But that works. Why not? It's a PHP function name. Good. Okay, what else? Hmm? Class. Okay, keywords will probably, okay, I'm done with the keywords because we can, we can have a long, long list of them. What else could, could you find that would be useful for you to decide if it's a function or not, if it's a PHP, it, it's PHP code or not? Okay, we're done with keywords and we're done with characteristic uh, I would say characters. What else? Hmm? Camel case. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, things in camel case, like words, because usually, I don't know in Polish actually, but um, they just one, at least there's at maximum, there's one um, uppercase, which is the first one, right? Thank you for help. So, yeah, camel case would be a good idea. Um, one that people usually miss is the size of the comments. Just sheer size of the comments, right? Again, I mentioned that in China the characters end with, um, with a special not dot, not the, the concatenation dot, while we use the same. Um, if you have special characters in your language, I don't know if you comment in Polish or not, I had 60 developers in Chinese, I made them comment in, in Chinese. So finding the characters, Chinese characters, was a characteristic thing. So here is, here is the list of, of uh, characteristics I would like to use in the following part of the session that uh, they characterize a PHP code inside a comment. Now, as mentioned, already in the previous one, we could argue a lot on commenting. Here, that would be the same. If you disagree, you're completely right, okay? The only thing is I'm also right, and I'm the one talking at the moment, so bear with me. But you can change it, and we'll see how actually how we can, we can change that. So what are the ones? The, the first characteristic, the one I like, is the size. Most of the time, something really long is not shoved aside for later. It's actually a big piece of code. I think it's characteristic. Um, count of, of, of dollar, the equal also, which does not happen too often in uh, our language, languages. Um, the operator, the object operator, and the semicolon. 
So that was a good one. I don't know if you got it from the, from the slide. Again, that list is completely arbitrary. This is my own expertise as commenting expert. Always just uh, start with that. Then we have to put that into fun format. And as I said, fun is a library which is nice and mature and dates back probably from education in the 80s. Okay, not 2080s, of course, the 19s. 1980s, so it's actually really old style. You have a first line, which is a kind of header. The first line says, I will give you 47 different uh, set of data, which are composed of five elements for the input and one element for the output. Okay, nowadays we would use a fancy like YAML stuff that will give us names so we don't have to, uh, you know, re-understand everything all the time, but at that time it was very convenient, so we just start with that. After that, we have sets of two lines. Every set of two lines, the first line is supposed to be five integers, and the second line is just one. We said Boolean, so Boolean is going to be easy, zero, one. You can see a few of examples here. And here we have a list of our five characteristics, which I link to actual comments there. And you can see um, the first one is actually a huge blob of license. So I put it here, that's why it's so big. The next one are one-liners, so it's a lot smaller, and sometimes they are uh, com coding comments, or sometimes they are not. Simple like that, just kind of weird, but once you've done the function once, then it's kind of easy to, uh, to not do it again, because um, At that point, I would like to insist on, to insist on something that I always found uh, important. What we've done here, we, we started with comments, right? We applied our brain power together to do this step, right? We start with that, and now we end up with this bunch of numbers, okay? At that point, we're going to feed fan with this bunch of number, and the number is going to come back, zero or one, and we're going to get the result, and we're going to decide if it's a comment or not, okay? Basically, I think it's kind of black magic. What do we know that those numbers, at least fan, how does fan know that those numbers are a number of carrots, a number of stars, or, I don't know, lines of code of PHP. We don't know. But it's going to process that and give us some results. Why would we understand that it as a result that's interesting for us? I don't know. So, now we're done. We've prepared the data. We've fed fun with it. And we just have to do the actual training on top of having the resource. So the second part of the code I mentioned earlier is this one, as you can see. We reuse the resource. And we use, again, one of those long names, train on file, very easy. Incoming data is the file name of the data we, pre we prepared pre previously. We have the number of epoch and the error. Number of epoch is the number of time fan is going to test the data until it finds a satisfactory set of parameters. This is the training itself. It's going to try something. Oh, it's good. It's not good. Then it draws back, change a little bit, try something again. And it's going to do that by default, half a million time. Half a million time. Not bad, right? Um, the other the desired error we're going to have here is 0 0.01, one, one, one thousandth, very little. Okay? How do we know that's good? Well, we don't know. Initially, we don't know. Okay? Again, <laughs> I didn't go far. This is the manual documentation. Okay? I started with that. The problem here, we cannot start with zero, and I, I digress with that. So, the error, what happens with the error, it happens a little bit like that. Imagine that we want fan to separate the green dots from the red dots. And we just leave it, give it a very large error margin. Okay? I don't know if 1,000th uh, is important or not, but if the error is too large, then fan is going to train very fast and find a very easy model. Here, just draws a very straight line, and it ends up with lots of errors. But since it's within the margin we ask, then it's going to be okay. If we feel that the training is too fast, then we'll probably train it a little more with a new error value, and the error value could make it lower, of course, could make it train a little harder, and that will be better. Okay? So here, the same set of dots, but trying to, show, to make a, a, a difference with that, and it's a little better. It's not much more difficult, but it's just a little better. Then we think, hey, if it trained better because we asked it to, do a, uh, to find a lower error, then we'd probably need to go further and just make it zero. And probably it will find something. 
The only thing is, it's probably to overfit data, meaning that it's going to give us a result that's only good because we gave it this kind of training data. Okay? So, I don't know, if you, if you try to train your child with the multiplication table from 1, 5, and 10, it will deduce a number of things, and then it will think that the rest work the same. Okay? So the data initially were important in terms of diversity and quantity, and also we, we accept a little level of error. Okay? This level, the level of error should not be zero, but we can actually train it given the amount of time it spent on training. If it spent too much time on training, probably going to, to, to do too much work, just reduce the error level and see if the results are good enough. We're going to see that also later. So, training itself, just to sum it up, 47 cases, though that's, that's a really short level, um, file, right? It's, it's a few hundred uh, octabytes. We have five, five, five characteristics, three hidden neurons, and the training itself on PHP on this machine, the one that's being hugged by the elephant, then it was five seconds. That's good, right? I mean, that's something we can manage. That's something we can, you know, prepare a session on it and try and retry and retry until we do something that's interesting. So that was the first part. It's not so bad. Of course, I'm not training that on the 40 million set of uh, Go games that AlphaGo had to do the training on, right? It's a really short one, but it's, it's worth it and it's not too long. So now we need to focus on the second part. Second part is now doing the real, the real data, the modelization. Well, we use the models you know, from the previous uh, step, and we get the results. So let's go to that. Application, we have the full script. It's the full training script was on two slides, OK? And I use a 40 size font. Um, the, the application is even smaller, OK? So the first one, we have to create, we have to create the um, the, the resource from the model. The model is the one we got from the training previously. We're going to give it one string. The make vector here is just a reminder that it's boring to go from the comment to the fan format, but we still have to, fin to feed fan with its own format. So the make vector here is, of course, something that trains, that takes my initial data and turns that into something fan can understand. From there, fun run. Look at that. This is a short sentence. This is a short function. And I got a result, which is there. And the first element of the array, it's an array. It's not even an object, right? The first element of an array is 0 0.8. I mean, it is a score. And then I get that. Simple enough. What do you think this 0 0.8 is? OK, just one of you and maybe louder. I'm, I'm old, guys. Hmm? Something rate? Success rate. Probability. OK. I need the third one. I'm sorry, you're too far. Thre OK, yeah, that's the threshold because it's our limit. So I understand that. Usually people yell at me something like percentage. I have no idea what this value is. We have. We have, okay, listen, we have fed fan with what? With numbers and counts, right? It's going to give us a number that's between 0 and 1. What does that mean? We, we say, okay, I want, I want booleans, right? Yes, no. And you give me something in, me in between? And it's not actually in between. The result varies from minus 14 to 1. What does that mean? Something is minus 14 times a comment? Maybe on Sundays, but I don't see for the rest of the day, right? The weeks. I don't know. Um, so it's a carrot count. It could be a carrot. I don't know. Honestly, honestly, I don't know. Maybe someone with higher level of, of neuro, um, neural network can, can explain. But at least I'm going to use that as a score, of course, uh, of certainty. That's going to be helpful, but that's all. Um, the closer to one is probably a comment, and the closer to zero is probably not a comment, but it can go very deep. So that's an interesting. What does, it, what does this look like? So I got all the 14,000 comments of PHP my admin run into the, 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 the uh, neural network. I got all the results, and I ordered them. Here is the result. So you can imagine from there to there, I mean, from the wall length, it's all the results just made next to each other and in, and the, in this order. Okay? So they do not come back at that. It would be a kind of a cloud of points. 
I'm only interested in, in a little part. We said everything above 0 0.8, okay, there's a mistake in the slide here, it's actually multiplied by 100, so you can, I'm sure, understand the percentage meaning. But the, the part that we extract, the only part, is just this little, little piece here. I had to, to enlarge it a lot to, to make it visible. Okay, so we get very little result. And as you can see also, the function itself goes weirdly. There are big steps and suddenly it goes close to the result. Okay, that's a good thing that you can do. Oh no, that's not possible. Um, that's a good thing you can do is just get the results and <laughs> okay, I, mean, I, have to, I have to speed up. Anyway, um, we, you can get the result and see. So um, let's take a look. Um, first, first the real case. Um, so it was 14,093 uh, comments and it actually ran on, on, my, on this machine on 68 milliseconds. How long did we say we need all those people in the, in the room to actually review them? Over an hour? I mean, if I say run, by the time my, my, my finger is lift from the keyboard, the results are in. And it's even better in PHP 7, so use PHP 7. That's, that's actually one of the main reasons I moved to PHP 7, because it was actually six times slower on PHP 5. The same data, the same results. Six times, and you imagine it's like half a second. And that includes reading the comments. Well, not scanning PHP my admin for it because that would be really too long, but I got all of them in one file, so the, the, the extraction was fast. 16,000. The other thing is we got 2,000 issues. So given the threshold of 0.8, we got 2,000 of issues. What do you think of that? Do you expect PHP my admin, which is which also started the millennium ago, right? Um, to have 2,000 comments out of 14,000? Who thinks it's too much? Okay, who thinks it's probably the number? Okay, like 200 around, something like that. Okay, so the rest of you think it's too few. You expect PHP Mammin to have a lot more than that, right? No, you're not sleep you're sleeping again. <laughs> there, I've seen people who haven't voted at all. Huh? Okay, let's see the result and see if it's good. Here is a bunch, of course, I'm not going to make you read the whole 2,000 of them. That would be uh, more than 15 minutes. Um, here is a number of results that I got. Seven lines of code, six seconds of training, nothing in terms of execution, and I got at least three of them. That's right. And that's exactly what we were expecting, right? Full sentence, full, full code, full one-liner, or that's a whole bunch of things. That's, that's actually very long. Of course, I, I didn't put everything. There's a bunch, the whole pieces of code that have been set aside for later. Maybe they don't use that anymore. I don't know. Yeah, it's not so old. Of course, if we scan the data, we also find things like that, which is not as good as the previous one, right? So the question here, I gave you seven lines of PHP code. Well, all of them calling fan extension. Where is the bug? Where is the bug? We have we have a number of things that do not work, right? Where is the bug? No, there's no bug. There's no bug. Well, have you ever seen a script that has no bug? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's me. Welcome in the world where there are false positives. That's nice. So here is the situation. We have things, they're false positive. The other one that's true negative, but that's, that's another problem. We have our expert work that will say if it's true or false. And when it's a positive, it means that fan found it. If it's a negative, it means that fan didn't find it, okay? And this whole table should apply to every comment. Okay, Let, let's take a look at the results. So here is the little thing. The first one, the first one says that found, found, found it because it's above 80. And do you think it's, uh, it's a comment? Yeah, so this one is a true positive. We agree with found that it's a good one. The other one here, well, this looks like a comment and found is not going to find it because it's below the level, okay? So this is going to be a true for us, negative for, for, um, for find, cannot find it. Things that has not been learned. Um, 
So what do we need? We need, well, there are all the others. I'm not going to train you on that because I have no time. Anyway, on the first result we get, there are a number of things that are repetitive and that we can, we can learn on. Especially there are two different things. There is a, f a, a Vim comment and pitch-me-admin being done on Vim. Well, Mark, one of the author, is make sure that every script, I mean, as this line in fir as first line, and remember, we said extract will remove everything that is obviously uh, not for, for us. Well, actually, this would be one of them because it's always the same line and we just learn it from there. So that should be removed at extraction time. The other one we learn about is that there's a bunch of lines like that which comes from PDF dimensions that could be detected and removed also easily. So we can get, get rid of those. And with the first easy clean, we can remove and end up with to 800 of them. Still, it's, not, it's a good job, right? I mean, if now I feed you with those 800 lines, you have 40 comments to read, in five minutes it's done, we can clear the code. Is that not right? So, total code of comments, of coding, and that includes finding the data, training it, and applying it to PHPMan admin, 27 minutes. Everything that I've explained to you from A to Z, except installing FAN, which may be a little longer, 27 minutes of time. How many situations can you try something that easy, collect a few data, train the system, apply it, end up with something that's probably 80% true, and gain from that? Lots of situations. It's worth trying, okay? Install fun and then you're done. You can try that on many, many situations that's interesting to you. But can we do that a little better? And we have another 10 minutes, right? Is that right? Oh, yeah, right. I'm talking too slow. How can we make that better? I'm just going to speed that through. This is very basic machine learning, right? Because we, do, we did supervised training, OK? I give you the data, you learn from it, and then we apply that. We need now to do some retroaction. If we don't have the retroaction, it will be included in the, the engine itself. It will be unsupervised training. That works. This is how your, tra your, your spam system is working, right? As you seek, um, you, you read an email, you say, okay, this is spam, this is spam, the system changed the parameters, comes back, clean a part of it, and then again, it's, it's learning along the way. It's not our case. Um, suggestions, so changing the data, changing the algorithm, automate the wall, learn all the time. Anyway, let's see. The first and the best answer, and this is why most of the time machine learning is linked to big data, is that in any situation, more data is the best answer. That's exactly what we did. We realized in the 2000 results that two of them were obviously something we missed. Then we're going to put that back in training, remove it, and, and train again. Okay? So more data is good. Okay? We obviously haven't spent too much, enough data, uh, spend time on learning, on, on finding the good data to make sure it's, it's working. Um, okay? So some of you disagreed or had other ideas of characteristics. Go back to that and train again on another set. Maybe there are other things that are more characteristic than the one I've chosen. Okay? Add some, remove some, that's also good work. Okay? But find the right set of characteristics, that's the best for you. Um, here is the evolution of the time of training given the amount of, uh, well, the size of the brain that we use. Okay? So we started with something that had one layer and that was three. Um, three neurons, so we're about here. And then I tried to do everything. I, I had more neurons and one layer, and then I decided to have another layer and have the neurons more complex, and then uh, uh, like that. Um, the more it goes, of course, the training is slower and slower, but even with 10 neurons, even in four layers, you see 15 seconds of training, so it's still something uh, affordable, okay? Or even on a small, small machine. That's an easy one. But of course, the more complex the situation, the more training you'll have to do, okay? But see, 15 seconds is still something that's affordable. Change the algorithm, that's a bad idea, generally speaking. Um, the only test I did is there is another algorithm with FAN, which end up with something that's really wrong, okay? But uh, there are also a wealth of algorithms in the world with all funny names, like hand colony, gravitational search, and things like that. Um, if you have other ways to try and to do machine learning, I may mention a few uh, engines later, give it a try. Give it a try, maybe changing the algorithm, but usually it's not, not very uh, characteristic. 
finding the best. Now we have trained it. We see that training is not getting so bad if we, we make it longer. What are the results? So this is a little crowded schema, but uh, results. But here is this is the 800 um, level we found right. <laughs> you do, you hate me. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is the, the, the level of things, the, the level of results we add when we clean the result on the first try. Okay, 800. <clears throat> you can find again our first configuration here. Okay, so one layer and three neurons here, which add about 2,000 results in the first system. And you can follow it. Just one layer. It's actually going further and further, but staying within the 2,000 range. So the size of our neuron do not yield much better result. Probably different. I'm not checking them all, one by one, but about the same number of results. Um, two level, two layers is also very stable. Three layers on the other end goes up, zero, goes up to 5,000, which is basically half of our comment, and goes back again, and then stabilize. So this is probably a bad, a bad configuration. Same stuff for the four layers. It just goes really crazy. That's another bad. So probably the best for our situation here is going to do that with two one or two layers. Since it takes me five seconds to train and, and half a millisecond to, uh, to test it on real data, well, it's worth giving it a try, right? Once you have the first result, you automate that. Two loops, train, test, train, test, how many I have in left. There we go. That's sufficient. Deep learning, I'm not going to, after, after that, I'm, going, I'm not going to give too much detail, but that's the step after that. Machine learning here is just learning how to find comments. Deep learning tries to organize all those elements inside the machine learning itself. Okay, there may be different steps involved before reaching the actual result. Again, if you go back to the AlphaGo, um, the AlphaGo um, example, they had three different machine learning systems, one to score, one to plan the next move, and one to plan the move from the, the opponent. On top of those three which were trained on historic data, there were a fourth machine learning system that was actually collecting this data and deciding which move to take. Okay? So this is why it's deep learning on top of the fact it's on, on big data. A few other tools if you want to go further than this presentation on machine learning that has actually seven lines of code. Um, well, there's FAD, of course, there is language air, there is ski, seek it, I never know how to say, I don't know how to say that, learn it, read it from there. Um, and Mahout has been used, I, I've, I know people who actually use it. It's in Java, it's lots complex, it has lots of algorithms and way to handle the data. And there's a way for you to actually feed it with some data from PHP web, from a PHP on a web server, and get pretty fast the result. Okay, so all we've seen in terms of how fast it is to, to run it, once you have done the training, then this one works pretty well. And I'm going to finish before he comes and he hacks me. Um, first thing, what you've learned is, well, using even very rudimentary machine learning yield some result. Anytime you have to fight with a huge amount of data and you want to filter that down, 25, 27 minutes, half an hour, maybe you can have something that helps you and reduce the amount of work. Give it a try, that's worth it, okay? And if it's not worth, anyway, this is, you know, do and through, just do it, through it, and do something else. The other one is, this is not a job for the uh, programmer. This is not a job for a developer. This is seven lines of code, right? Where's the, what's the challenge of you know, organizing the data and things like that? No, you have to know, you have to be an expert. You have to manipulate data, clean it, and do the training. Maybe someone is going to be an expert for you. After that, the process itself is organized. <laughs> How many do you have left? <laughs> I had 15, oh, there's one, okay. <laughs> Um, use it for complex situation. Anytime there's a margin for error or you don't know exactly how to modelize something, probably machine learning will help you. Not do everything, but help you a lot. So give it a try. And finally, well, you can come back home with that. I mean, just fine, downloading it and trying exactly the code you have in the slide that will be on my account on SlideShare. Then, that's, yeah, then you can do that tonight. And you have less than one minute for questions. <laughs> this is why I usually ask people questions so that I don't get any. Oh. <laughs> so, 
Oh, I have a question when you uh, showed us after we had the results, we filtered them to get the false uh, positives. Yes. Shouldn't we also do the same to get the false uh, negatives to also increase the uh, data we want yes. but yes. didn't get? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, completely. I didn't do it, but yeah, that's exactly uh, something you, you have to do. The only thing, well, most of the time, false negatives do not get any press because the system, I mean, press attention because, of course, you don't want to review all of them, all the 14,000, because you're trying to avoid that, right? So, um, usually, I just go on the true false positives, review them because there are a short uh, number of them, and then move back to training because that's the shortest set. Now, yes, it's interesting to take a look at the, well, you, we said uh, 14,000 or so the 12,000 other comments and see if we can grab some more. So, yes, that's completely part of the retroaction on the quality of data. Yes? Mm, on, in the one of the very first examples you showed, uh, there was a mysterious function, uh, create vector. Uh, could you tell us what, oh, no, what it's doing? Not Uh, the, I mentioned the make vector. What was that? Yeah. This one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Make vector is exact. It's it's something as you see. It it starts with a with a um, with a comment, and it creates the vector of data for fun. Okay. And the vector is exactly the same than the one I built <coughs> ah, here. Okay. So. That would be the vector, okay? It has just, just this, this line. In training, I have the results, so one line of vector and the result, and that's also built exactly the same way. So I start with a, with a comment, give it to make vector, and get this line of numbers. When you do it in real case, you don't have the, the result, of course, you're waiting for it, but then you still have to input the data in the right order, and especially here, I don't know which order, well, this is the length, obviously, because it's the long one. The others are count. I don't know exactly which order it is now, okay? But um, you should be able to, so make a, make a function, or a method for that matter, so you use it for training, and then you forget about it, but you still use it in, um, in the application. Is that clear? Just a helper, just a helper to be, to be concise. A minus one minute? Oh, okay, oh, oh no. The end. <laughs> Last one. I, I'm, I'm here anyway. I have, a, I have a tomorrow morning for those of you who are still awake. Tomorrow morning I have a full session on, um, on, on moving to PHP 7. But if you want to ask me questions, I'm, I'm, I'm still available until Monday anyway. Uh, just one question. Uh, when you created the vector, you only input data as uh, integers. So these are numbers. Can you feed the network with non-integer input data, so it could be a string, something like that, or is it impossible for the algorithm? I don't, okay, given, given this one in particular, I think there is, no, um, there is no string that could be there. I don't see how it's going to work behind that. I haven't tried though, so you, can, you, may, you may give it a try. I think real numbers would be fine. It will accept it, and especially I see that with the result. We decided to have a Boolean, but we could have something that's a little more complex and like a ranking, okay? Um, in terms of string, no, I don't think so. The machine behind is not going to uh, um, apply any uh, understanding on the string itself. It's there, it's not there. It's probably going to turn that into a, an integer itself. Okay, thanks. Thank you, and I'm going to let the...